Is winning a research grant one of your goals for next year? In this video, I'll be sharing with you top six research grants that you should be on a lookout for. Whether you're an undergraduate, a postgraduate, or you're a lecturer in the university, or you belong to a research organization or an NGO, and you're looking for a research grant to apply for. In this video, I'll be sharing with you top six research grant that you should be on the lookout for and in fact if you think you're not eligible you can still collaborate with other researchers prepare an application i know how difficult it is for uh, an early career researcher to see a grant to apply to in this video i'll be sharing with you top six research grant that you should apply to next year and if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel kindly subscribe now the very first grant on the list is the GSK Africa Open Lab. This, la this research grant is open to researchers across African countries. If you are interested in doing research on infectious diseases such as malaria, tuberculosis, among others, you are going to be awarded £100,000 for you to do your research. And this funding is available up to 36 months. This is an amazing opportunity for early career researcher that is interested in doing research. But there's a caveat. You must never or previously have heard any grant that is greater than £100,000. So, of course, you have to have you have to be a public health researcher, you need to have an MSc or PhD, or you'll be an, a medical doctor. But if you think you don't have this minimum criteria, you can still collaborate with the other people and you can prepare a strong application together. I will encourage you if you're interested in infectious disease and you're based in sub saharan Africa, you're based in Africa, I will hold you to apply for this funding. It is worth £100,000 up to 36 months and you have the opportunity to do research in different areas such as malaria, tuberculosis, antimicrobial resistance, enteric disease, neglected tropical disease among others. And you can cover different areas such as infectious disease epidemiology, pathophysiology, etiology of disease among others. So I will hold you if you are based in Africa that you should consider applying for this Af Africa Open Lab grant by gsk another amazing thing about this funding is that you have the opportunity to collaborate with the pharmaceutical giant gsk and you can learn from them you can learn from the mentorship program on how uh, you can improve yourself and how you can also improve your skills as an early career researcher remember this grant is not for degree it's not for fellowship or for your tuition in any university it's basically you doing research as a public health researcher to advance knowledge in the areas that they are interested in in infectious diseases and like i said you must have a minimum of a graduate degree and that simply means that if you don't meet this criteria you can collaborate with others and you, have, and you can prepare an application together remember you must be based in africa and you must never have received any funding greater than hundred thousand pounds another amazing funding that i'm going to recommend to you is isid research capacity building grant by the international society for infectious disease this funding primarily focus on infectious disease as well and you'll be awarded 7500 usd for you to do your research and this funding is open to people from low income and lower middle income country according to the world bank whether you're from afghanistan for Bini, from burundi from guinea you are eligible to apply and you must be a public health researcher a scientist within eight years of completion of a phd or you have equivalent professional training or you're a medical doctor you have public health degree you're a pharmacist you're an undergraduate of course you can say you're a public health researcher so they're just interested in people that have amazing ideas or areas that they want to explore when it comes to infectious disease and they have different areas that they are also interested in they are different they are interested in areas like investigation of the of epidemiology pathophysiology and diagnosis of infectious disease antimicrobial resistance cost effectiveness of intervention for infectious disease if you have beautiful ideas around in any area of infectious disease they are open to fund you and of course you must be below 35 years when you actually apply for this funding and you must be based 
and you must have an affiliation with an institution in LMIC. So remember, if you are from any of this country, you are eligible. And if you have any idea that we advance our knowledge on infectious disease, you are eligible to apply. And this application is straight to the point. You have just the background, the method, the limitation, and of course your research plan, briefly in four pages maximum. And you have to submit a CV, two pages, and of course letter of reference, and you'll be awarded 7,500 USD for you to do your research in any area of infectious disease that align, of course, with your interest. So I will hold you as an early career researcher, whether you're a public health researcher, they mention it here. If you're a public health researcher, you are eligible to apply, whether you have a PhD or not. Another generous grant that you should be on a lookout for is the early career grant from the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and IJ. And in fact, I know undergraduates, I know lecturers, I know early career researchers that have received this funding. Whether you're a student, whether you're a postgraduate, whether you just finished your master's, whether you're a doctoral student, you are eligible to receive this funding. It's going to open again in early 2025 and one of the caveats to this funding is that you must not have received any grant up to five thousand pounds before so you're going to be awarded uh five thousand pounds for you to do your research in areas of tropical medicine or global health so this is a wide definition so you have to propose something that is doable within that budget uh, in the areas of tropical medicine, infectious disease, non-communicable disease, uh, global health in general. You are free to propose any uh, that can be completed with just £5,000. And this grant is open to anyone, whether you're in Asia, whether you're in, in Africa, uh, whether you're in no or middle income country. So this funding is open to quite a number of early career researchers across different countries. So I would urge you to apply for this grant. They are so generous to early career researchers and they award nothing less than 290 early career grants annually. They mentioned it that they actually award that. So if you're also from Africa, there's also a special funding by NIHR. Uh, or if you're from lower middle income country, there's another one with NIHR UK uh, in partnership with the Royal Society of Tropical Medicine and Nigeria that they award quite a lot of funding. And you can see around 230 were awarded last year. So they also have a number of partners. So they have different projects. They are so generous with funding and I will hold you to actually prepare an application. If you are on, if you are an undergraduate, you're a graduate student, you're a lecturer, early career, any kind of early career researcher in any field that you've not received any funding that is up to 5,000 pounds, you are eligible to apply. So consider submitting your application when it's open again. So the mention here that is going to open again in early 2025. So be on a lookout for the funding. Another funding call that you should be on the lookout for is the African Researcher Small Grants Program. This program is actually open in two phases. They have a grant for early career researcher. They have another one for mid career researcher. For early career researcher, is actually worth thirty thousand USD. I will hold you to apply for this grant, especially people that are interested in neglected tropical disease. So they have this funded to support early career and mid career researcher across uh, different African countries and African institutions. So be on a lookout for this funding. You can see they want to increase African leadership in, in involvement and feasibility in LTD operational and implementation research. If neglected tropical disease is one of your major interests, please consider submitting your application to this funding call. It's going to open again next year and you should consider submitting your application. 30,000 US dollars for early career researcher and for mid career researcher, about 20,000 USD for you to do your research on topics related to neglected tropical disease. Another generous grant that you should be on the lookout for is from the Power Foundation. And Power Foundation, they actually focus on antibiotic resistance. If you are working on AMR and you are looking for a grant to support your work, this is an amazing opportunity for you and be on the lookout for the Power Foundation grants. Uh, they primarily focus on research that has to do with antibiotics, antimicrobial resistance, and they have both educational grants and they have research grants as well. If you are interested in 
the educational aspect of antimicrobial resistance, you can submit an application. If you're interested in research grants, you can also consider submitting an application. So they give the award a generous grant, I, I think up to 28,000 euros euros for an educational grant and for research grant more than 50,000 euros so please be on the lookout for the power foundation early career uh, grant uh, for you to be able to uh, do interesting amazing work in the area of antimicrobial resistance i know people that also want this particular funding early career professionals uh, in fact undergraduate students that have received this funding uh, to to do uh, amazing work in the area of uh, amr so if you are interested in antimicrobial resistance, please consider submitting your application to Power Foundation when they open. And the last but not the least, at least for this round of the video that I'm going to make on this particular on funding that you can apply to. And if you watch up to this time, please kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. This funding is also open for people that are interested in antimicrobial resistance. And you are based in Africa. So for now, they're not sure if the funding is going to open again, but be on the lookout because anything can happen. And if they receive more funding, they will be able to consider you, especially if they're interested in AMR. So they've supported a number of people already. So they are looking forward to supporting uh, more people, but that is pending on if they receive funding. So be on the lookout if you're interested in antimicrobial resistance. Thank you very much for watching up to this time. Please kindly subscribe and like this video. I'm going to make more videos to share more grants that you can also apply. This is just like a part one. Uh, I wish you all the best in achieving your goal. Bye.